Hi YouTubers, this is Lonnie Clark again. I thought I'd start to read Chapter 2 of Population Control Through Nuclear Pollution. Um, so here we go. It's a quite a long chapter. I don't think I'll get very far. But I think what I'm going to do is put my bumper glasses on top of this so I don't have to be four inches away from the page. So I know, eccentric, but that's the way it goes. By the way, I have not read this book. I'm reading it with you, so you'll have to bear with me. I'm going to improve on uh, making an effort on the reading thing. Chapter 2, Biological Effects of Radiation. Dun, 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 dun. A material introduced into our environment may represent a serious biological hazard for two reasons. It may represent a hazard, one, because we know because of what we know, and two, because of what we don't know about the material. Our knowledge can guide us, but we must be constrained by our ignorance. For essentially every material introduced into our environment, our ignorance pales our knowledge. We know more about the biological effects of radiation than any other environmental pollutant. What we, what we do know tells us that the present permissible radiation pollution levels are a travesty to public health. What we don't know concerning the genetic effects of radiation suggests a monumental tragedy. At long last, we should heed Claude Bernard who wrote, In ignorance, refrain. <laughs> that that should be our motto. In ignorance, refrain. Only that's what people do is they refrain from taking action because they think they don't know. I think you just need to find out more. That's what we're doing here. Radiation and the indication and radiation and the induction of cancer and leukemia. Here we go. There exists by now a large body of detailed information concerning the injurious, including lethal effects of ionizing radiations, alpha particles, beta particles, neutrons, x-rays, and gamma rays, on numerous animal species studied in the laboratory, as well as upon man. Indeed, the experimental animal data Indeed, the experimental animal data have long provided sufficient evidence concerning radiation hazards to have led to a rational approach for consideration of hazard to man. Unfortunately, and because of the promotional aspects of, of atomic energy development, the sanguine requirement has been made to see the human corpses before any credibility is assigned to the hazard for the homo sapiens. Let's read that again. Let me read it again better this time. Unfortunately, and because of the promotional aspects of, ato of atomic energy development, the sanguine requirement has been made to see the human corpses before any credibility is assigned to the hazards for homo sapiens. In no other field do we proceed in such an incredible manner. In the food additive field, human use is barred if cancer production is demonstrated experimentally in any species. This represents elemental common sense to a public health approach. Such common sense has at no time characterized the approach in the field of radiation. Thus, a massive deception has been foisted upon the unwitting public in assessing radiation hazard for man. With respect to causation of leukemia and cancer in man, the story is truly appalling. Those persons promoting this technology have demanded, and still demand, in evaluating hazards for man, that direct observation of corpses from each and every type of leukemia and cancer is required. This led to a colossal underestimation of the radiation hazard for man and still does in a manner important to describe here. The Federal Radiation Council, the FRC guidelines for permissible radiation. Now remember guys, Obama raised this exponentially there's some say 
26,000%. That's what I read. We measure the amount of radiation received by the whole body or any of its parts in the unit known as the rad. One rad is defined as the absorption of a specific amount of ionizing radiation energy. 100 ERGs or ERGs of energy per gram of body tissue. One rad. One rad is defined as the absorption of a specific amount of ionizing radiation energy, 100 ergs of energy per gram of body tissue. An average individual receives 1.5 rads of radiation from a variety of medical procedures by 30 years of age. For most practical, for most practical purposes, the rad is equivalent to an other unit commonly encountered and known as the RAM. One RAM equals 1,000 millirads. Beyond these simple definitions of radiation dosage, the reader will require no additional concepts to understand how radiation units are used in consideration of radiation causation of cancer, leukemia, and other diseases. That's cool. There has been ample reason for skepticism concerning our Federal Radiation Council guidelines, which legally permit the average U.S. citizen to receive 0.17 rads or 170 millirads per year as a result of, quote, peaceful, unquote, atomic energy activities. And such skepticism has been merited for many years. In essence, this is the case because of valid scientific justification for the allowable dose of 0.17 rads of total body exposure to ionizing radiation has never been presented. Hmm. In essence, this is the case because of valid scientific justification for the allowable dose of, of 0.17 rads of total body exposure to ionizing radiation has never been presented. They've never told us why that number. Hmm. The general vague statement is usually repeated that the, re the risk to the population so exposed is believed to be small compared to the benefits to be derived from the orderly development of atomic energy for peaceful purposes. Dr. Brian McMahon, professor of epidemiology at Harvard, writing as recently as early 1968, stated, While a great deal more is known now than was known 20 years ago, it must be admitted that we still do not have most of the data that would be required for an informed judgment on the maximum limits of exposure advisable to individuals or populations. This, vast, this is vastly different from the bland reassurances of the, Feder, of the FRC, the Federal Radiation Council guidelines. We find ourselves in general agreement with Professor McMahon, except that we would go further and feel the already documented evidence amply, amply justifies a dramatic revision downwards and now. Now, in big letters, big, N-O-W. This was written in 1970, folks. Wow. There, there is an even more hazardous situation associated with the vagueness of the justification of FRC guidelines. This hazard has become apparent to us through extensive contact with people in radiation surveillance work in the atomic energy industry and in atomic energy laboratories. Widely prevalent is the notion that the existing standards have a wide margin of safety built in. Many such individuals refuse to believe that any responsible body would ever set a guideline dosage into the federal statutes without a wide margin of safety. Hmm. That means a wide margin of safety means like 
it might be this much or it might be this much but we're going to say maybe this much but it could really be this much but we're going to say this that's fucking insane how is it possible that our current frc guidelines may have falsely lulled us into complacency let us trace the evidence and restrict our considerations to two major effects of radiation upon human beings in this generation namely cancer and leukemia that is effects upon those actually receiving the radiation any conclusion we draw concerning the hazards of the current radiation guidelines can only be amplified and buttressed by considerations of the additional burden of human misery associated with genetic defects, fetal deaths, and neonatal deaths. The case against perpetuation of the existing FRC guidelines is overwhelmingly strong just on the basis of the cancer leukemia risk, even without considering the potentially much larger problem of effects upon future generations. Wow. I'm at 11 minutes. Well, I'm going to stop here. The next subtitle is How Did the Complacency Arise? But look at how long this just the sub part. It goes all the way here, all the way here, all the way here. So I'm going to stop and we'll come back to that. Wow. Well, this is a shocking book, isn't it, folks? So, anyways, I'm going to end here. I'm going to upload this, and then um, we'll pick this up. I'll read a little bit every single night. I don't think I'm going to put out a couple of chapters every night. It gets way confusing. So, besides, you probably can't listen to me read at least that book for more than 10 or 12 minutes. <laughs> so, anyways, um, I hope that this reading... I hope you guys can comprehend this. It's kind of hard for me to comprehend it even as I'm talking about it, but I'm getting it. It's kind of shocking, to be honest. I'm a slow reader. I usually go back and read things twice. Um, wow. Uh, that really stunned me, that information. And here we are, like what? That was 70. That's like, what, 40 years ago? 45 years ago, that's when that was. That is shocking. That's that's the shock about it, you guys. 45 years ago, this guy was jumping up and down, and nobody listened. And now we have Fukushima going on, and the whole fucking nuclear industry is really falling apart, and they want to pretend like it's okay. It's not okay. And we need to stop it, and we need to get people to pay attention. I, I personally have decided what I'm going to do. I'm taking off this next term. I, I'm going to stop at 15 minutes. I'm going to take off the next term, regroup, get my office back in, caught up, and I am going to be taking time out for the Post-Ignorance Project. I'm going to be making appointments with the mayor, with the city commissioners, with all of the elected officials. I'm going to drive to their office and ask them about this issue and really impress upon them, give them some knowledge. I'm going to print things out and bring them stuff that they are going to have to look at. Because I don't think that they understand the gravity of what is fucking happening here. So, I'm going to read this book again. And I think I'm going to start a different book. Ciao, you guys. Sweet dreams and be hopeful. We are the answer. We came here on purpose. And I think we're here on purpose. So, ciao.